Hey all, welcome back to the Real Life Pharmacology Podcast. I'm your host, pharmacist Eric Christensen. Thank you so much for listening today. As always, go to reallifepharmacology.com. Get your free 31-page PDF on the top 200 drugs. It's a great little study guide, a great review if you're out in practice or going through pharmacology exams or board exams. Uh, You'll definitely enjoy that resource. All it'll cost you is an email. Subscribe to our list. We've also got updates as to when we've got uh, new content and other things available as well. All right, the drug of the day today is Phentermine. Brand name of this medication is Adapex, also called uh, Fasten at times as well. So this drug is classified as a central nervous system or CNS stimulant. Uh, the use of this medication in clinical practice, I only see it used for one thing and one thing alone, and that's weight loss or weight management. Okay, so being a CNS stimulant, you could understand that it can reduce appetite, and it primarily does this by increasing uh, release of norepinephrine and possibly uh, dopamine as well. So its pharmacology really kind of follows along the lines of amphetamine and amphetamine derivatives. Uh, so knowing that, you can recognize you know, some of the adverse effects that you might encounter there as well. So a couple things about weight loss or weight management that I wanted to mention. Uh, in practice, uh, I'm generally seeing less of this medication uh, being used. I definitely have seen it from time to time. Uh, GLP-1 agonist is probably something I see a little bit more often. Uh, And I think part of the reason there is the cardiovascular issues there. GLP-1 agonists have been shown to potentially have some cardiovascular benefits. And phentermine being a stimulant Um, We could have some elevated blood pressure, tachycardia risk, and potentially increase the risk in patients uh, specifically with uh, cardiovascular disease. So um, those are are two agents I've I've definitely seen uh, in practice uh, in weight management or or weight loss. Uh, Other agents, Orlistat, uh, bupropion, naltrexone, uh, they're they're topiramate in combination, um, with phentermine. So these are some other agents I have seen used for weight management. They all have uh, pluses and minuses, that type of thing, um, which I'm not going to get into on this podcast. But uh, those are some of the other agents that I certainly have seen in uh, weight loss or, or weight management. Uh, dosing, mentioned briefly here, uh, 50 milligrams dosing, uh, 30 milligram dosing, uh, up to 37.5 milligram Uh, dosing there. It is typically recommended for short-term use up to 12 weeks. With that said, um, I have seen it used longer than that in some patients. It is an adjunct. It is supposed to be an adjunct to uh, diet and exercise changes as well. Um, So I think that's important to uh, emphasize for patients that just Taking this medication isn't necessarily going to cause, uh, you know, weight loss on its own, or at least adding that diet and exercise changes component with the medication um, can really give you a lot bigger uh, bang for your buck there. All right, let's get into the side effects in a little more detail here. So I mentioned uh, the cardiovascular issues, being a CNS stimulant, increase in blood pressure increase in heart rate so that tachycardia uh, can happen. I will say I haven't seen it a ton in clinical practice. And generally when I've seen this drug use, seen phentermine used, uh, it has been uh, in a little bit younger patient population where maybe uh, those risks aren't quite as great as in a patient with you know, 68 years old who's maybe got cardiovascular issues, that type of thing. So um, really pay attention to the patient that you're giving this medication to um, and recognizing if they are uh, at risk for cardiovascular issues. Um, Other adverse effects that are going to come into play potentially due to that CNS stimulant activity, insomnia. So kind of a no-brainer 
thinking about administration and administration time, uh, we're going to give that drug typically earlier in the day, right? So we don't cause that insomnia versus at uh, supper time or, or the evening meal time. Um, we're going to run the risk of, of causing insomnia, which the patient is not going to like too much. Uh, GI upset can happen, um, obviously, along with the insomnia, uh, maybe some anxiety, shakiness, um, rare uh, issues with uh, seizures have been reported, so I think that's important to note, and that can certainly be with any drug with stimulant activity. Usually that's going to be, uh, you know, dose, as with many adverse effects, is going to be a dose-related uh, issue there. Uh, and then phentermine is a Schedule four controlled substance, so there's going to be some risk for addiction uh, dependence with that classification. All right, pharmacokinetics I want to touch on a little bit. So it is significantly excreted in the urine. So generally what that means, as patients have worse and worse kidney function or lower and lower uh, creatinine clearance or GFR, whatever you want to call it, um, we're going to have to uh, be careful with the aggressiveness of the dose uh, and or avoid the drug if patients have really severe impairment generally. So uh, that, that cutoff line, I would say, is probably 30 mils per minute. If you got a patient lower than that, uh, you're probably going to want to be careful with the dose. If you got somebody less than, um, you know, 15 mils per minute, then it's going to be generally recommended to avoid this medication. Uh, other kinetics things, uh, peak concentration. I did want to mention that. So, peak concentration after taking this medication orally is about three to four hours. So, as you could expect. Uh, if you're going to run into issues, let's say, uh, think going back and thinking about that insomnia adverse effect, uh, if you take it with the evening meal, say 6, 7 o'clock, you're going to run into that peak concentration at 10, 11 o'clock when people are probably trying to kind of wind down and, and get to sleep for the day. So uh, again, paying attention to that timing, uh, you're going to want to dose this medication in the morning for sure. Uh, monitoring parameters. Obviously, we're going to be monitoring weight. Uh, that's what we're trying to do with this medication uh, is induce some weight loss for our patient. And then, of course, the cardiovascular things we're going to look out for as well. So blood pressure, heart rate are probably going to be uh, important monitoring things there. All right, let's take a quick break from our sponsor and we'll wrap up with drug interactions. If you're in the market for pharmacist board certification study material like NAPLEX, pharmacotherapy, ambulatory care, geriatrics, psychiatry, BCMTMS exam, definitely go check out meded101.com slash store, S-T-O-R-E. We've got a growing list of resources there, definitely helped over thousands of people pass their board exam. So uh, great content uh, specific for your exam. I think that's really important um, with our content is that it's very, very specific towards your exam and toward the content outline of that exam. With that said, if you're a nurse, nurse practitioner, med student, so on and so forth, uh, I've got a growing list of resources for you there. We've got a nursing guide, uh, MedEd 101 guide to nursing pharmacology. We've got a book on drug-food interactions. Uh, recently released a new Audible book, Perils of Polypharmacy. So if you're into geriatrics and that type of thing, um, great resource there. So all those links you can find, meded101.com slash store, S-T-O-R-E. All right, wrapping up with drug interactions. First thing I think about is the mechanism of action. So any type of stimulant medication is going to potentially have additive effects. Okay, so think about ADHD drugs, illicit drugs like cocaine, amphetamines. Um, all those drugs are going to potentially have additive effects. Uh, opposing effects to weight loss, that's certainly something I think about. So sulfonylureas can cause weight gain, for example. Uh, 
mirtazapine tends to be a drug that causes some weight gain. So think about those medications as well, maybe before adding medications for weight management. MAOIs, uh, increased blood pressure risk, can happen there, so that can be an additive type effect. Uh, seizure threshold lowering drugs, I do pay attention to that slightly with Ventramine. Uh, so bupropion, uh, tramadols maybe got some activity there uh, that could have some additive effect and increase the risk for seizures. And then drugs that have serotonergic activity, uh, there is the possibility uh, of having, having some additive uh, serotonin type activity with fentermine on there. Again, not crazy high on my, my radar list, but if you've got patients on uh, higher doses of you know fluoxetine or sertraline, let's say 200 milligrams or above, um, maybe fentermine could bump up that risk, uh, at least in theory, a little bit further there. So uh, some things to definitely pay attention to on the drug interaction side. All right, well, I think that's going to wrap up the podcast for today. If you found this episode helpful, please leave us a rating review on iTunes or wherever you're listening. That helps us grow the audience. Uh, share us with your email listservs if you've, you know, precepting students or if maybe you are a student and you're working with um, healthcare professionals out in practice. Definitely share us with them. A uh, great way to stay kind of up to date and obviously paying attention to uh, medication management. If you want to reach out to me, Eric Christensen, PharmD, BCPS, BCGP, you can find me on LinkedIn or email mededucation101 at gmail.com. As always, support our sponsor, meded101.com slash store, S-T-O-R-E. And of course, uh, leave us a kind rating review on whatever your platform you're listening. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.